Hello and welcome to the General Sir John Monash Foundation Information Seminar for the 2020 John Monash Scholarships. The General Sir John Monash Foundation raises funds and administers the John Monash Scholarships. We award 15 to 20 scholarships each year to exceptional individuals from all fields of endeavour who wish to pursue a postgraduate degree at an overseas institution as a part of a greater vision for the benefit of Australia. Obviously, this picture of John Monash is very relevant as not only is he our foundation namesake, but our scholars are selected on the basis that they select similar qualities of leadership. So a first important tip in terms of the scholarship application, the fact that we are named the General Sir John Monash Foundation is relevant to applying for this scholarship. I certainly encourage applicants to consider what reflecting on this sort of leadership means as an applicant for our scholarship. So what are the key things that define the John Monash Scholarship? Firstly, we are uniquely Australian, established in Australia for Australian citizens for the benefit of Australia. We are open for people of all ages from all fields of endeavour. And we're not restricted by where you would like to study as long as you can demonstrate why it is the best place in the world for you and your specific field of study. What is the foundation looking for in a strong application for our scholarship? Firstly, demonstrated excellence within your field. This could refer to academic excellence or it could be a myriad of other things. You'll notice we don't have a minimum GPA requirement for our scholarship selection criteria. However, this is because we do not wish to limit our applications in this way. You do not need to have completed honours to apply or have only received H1 throughout your entire university career. However, we do expect that applications should have grades that indicate you're able to get into the postgraduate study you're proposing and complete and flourish in this degree. Another important tip on this um, excellence in your field point is, it, is if you have aspects of your transcript that are not outstanding, you should be prepared to explain why. Use this as an opportunity to expand your narrative and clarify your ability to take on the postgraduate study. The second point is demonstrated leadership ability or potential. Leadership is a huge concept and you should not let yourself be intimidated by this when trying to tackle your application. Leadership can be demonstrated in so many different ways depending on who you are and what it is you do. Think about all types of leadership, both the, the traditional and the subtler types. And think about how you evidence this in multiple facets of your life, whether it be professional, personal or academic. The third point there is a vision which will be of benefit to Australia. This is really vital to application. Essentially, applicants that don't hit this marker are not going to be progressed in the scholarship selection process. The proposed pathway you're, you are undertaking with your postgraduate study needs to be a part of a bigger picture that has a greater benefit than your own career advancement. And this is a very important tip to keep in mind um, through the application process is not to be vague with this. Be clear about what your proposed benefit for Australia is and make this consistent throughout your narrative. As if the online reviewers think that it's unclear, then your application is unlikely to be progressed. Also on this point is often applicants might say that this proposed benefit to Australia can be difficult to take on when you come from fields of study that are much more theory based very understandable and it can seem daunting in the, to be in this position and put your proposed benefit up against the likes of more obvious types of tangible outcomes that could be proposed by uh, someone who is a medical researcher, for example. However, I do encourage applicants to keep in mind that our applications are open to all fields of endeavour for this reason and we need all sorts of great minds to invest in Australia's future. So if you're able to be clear in your goal and your vision and how you plan on achieving it, and there's no reason why you should not be able to explain why it will be a benefit and deliver this with confidence. So keep in mind that this benefit for Australia can be affecting change through your own field of study. And also keep in mind that applications at the online review stage are shortlisted by a team of assessors who 
a professional's relevant to your field of study proposal. Also good to keep in mind our eligibility requirements. So you're only able to complete an application should you be an Australian citizen, have completed or be about to complete a degree from an Australian institution with grades that indicate that you'll be able to get into your proposed postgraduate degree. And finally, if you plan on applying in this upcoming round, you must plan on starting the proposed postgraduate degree at an overseas institution in the 2020 calendar year. To clarify on that start date, as it's a very frequently asked question, you must be commencing the degree in 2020. If you're commencing the degree in 2019 at any stage, then unfortunately you are not eligible to apply. The course can commence at any stage in 2020. It is not expected at the time of making an application that the applicant will have um, applied to or been accepted to the postgraduate degree that you're proposing. How, um, in fact, it's actually more common that applicants will not have yet made that application. Also on this point, as underlined, the degree must be a postgraduate degree. It can be your first level of postgraduate study or you've completed or if you've already completed a postgraduate degree and applying for another postgraduate degree, then that is also fine. The scholarship can be used to support either a master's or a PhD or equivalent. What do you get if you're successful in obtaining a scholarship? This could be quite helpful in regard to the budgeting section of the application. It is a set stipend of 70,000 Australian dollars per year for up to three years, plus support with one return flight to and from the location of your study from Australia. This means that the years of funding are measured by the length of your proposed study at a full-time study load. So a one-year master's degree will be eligible for 70,000 Australian dollars, um, versus a PhD, which is eligible for three years of funding, a total of 210,000 Australian dollars. This figure is set regardless of the degree cost. The funding can be used in support of your studies at the discretion of the scholar. Um, however, it is expected that in the first case, the funding will be used on tuition. And in the case that there is additional funds left over, then it can be used on living expenses, accommodation and travel, um, et cetera, in support of your studies overseas. You can hold the scholarship concurrently with other sources of income, including other grants and bursaries. You cannot hold the scholarship concurrently with other fully funded scholarships. You can hold the scholarship with fee waivers from university that you plan on applying to. So obviously this amount of funding for each scholar will will go further depending on where they're studying. For example, a scholar doing a PhD in Europe will receive the same funding for three years as a scholar doing their PhD at Cambridge or Harvard. Um, and in some locations, this funding may go a lot further in covering costs, um, whereas at other institutions, it may not even fully cover the tuition. And for this reason, we ask applicants to complete a breakdown of their expenses required for the postgraduate study, including all living expenses, as it shows if an applicant has given serious considerations to the realities of the postgraduate study abroad and confidence in the fact that they will be able to manage the time financially and complete the studies comfortably. You should use this question on the application about the cost and the budget to show that you've done your due diligence, looked up the expected living expenses for the city you plan on living in, and work out if there's a shortfall between the scholarship and the total expenses, and if so, explain on how you plan on covering this. As a side note, we do have three special affiliate agreements with IE Madrid, King's College London and Cranfield, Cranfield in the UK. These institutions offer additional fee waiver support for any John Monash scholar that wishes to study there. There are some restrictions around these regarding the course of study, uh, but if you're particularly inter interested in one of these institutions, I encourage you to get in touch with the foundation directly and there'll be contact details at the end of this presentation. Also, outside of the financial support, the foundation and alumni becomes a lifelong support network. You'll have contacts around the globe, be invited to interesting and dynamic alumni events in Australia and overseas. 
The relationship certainly does not have an expiry date once you finish the postgraduate study. Majority of our scholars remain very involved in the foundation, organize events around the globe, collaborate on research, assist each other personally and professionally. The exposure to networks in Australia and abroad themselves are invaluable. What to expect of the application and selection process? It runs over a very large portion of the year from May until approximately October. And this is why we essentially require our, our applicants to be commencing the study in the next calendar year. Applications, as you know, will open on the 1st of May and they remain open until 11.59 p.m. on July 14th. To be considered in the coming scholarship round, you must submit an application online via our online portal by the close date. Once the applications are closed, um, they will not be reopened and late applications are not accepted. Each year we'll roughly receive around 350 applications and after the online shortlisting process, about 100 of these will be invited to the state and territory first round interviews. We interview around the country, um, as well as two panels that are, con are conducted by video conference or Skype for applicants that are overseas at the time of these first round interviews. These dates will be listed on the applications page of our website. Out of the 100 that go to the first round interviews, about 40 of these will be put forth to the national and final interviews, which are held in Sydney and Melbourne, and which will be toward the end of September or early October. Again, these dates will be on the website as soon as they are confirmed. After the national interviews, we will award between 15 and 20 scholarships. The scholarship recipients will then be formally announced. As mentioned, this is a very long process. And the benefit of being involved is that there is feedback available throughout the entire process. You only need to reach out and ask for it. If the best case scenario is $70,000 a year to go and live out your dream and that might help you achieve something that you're passionate about and the worst case is the opportunity for some professional and personal development, then it's certainly a worthwhile process to be in. We do encourage applicants to reach out for feedback even after the online review stage. Given the large amount of applications we receive and then the, the shortlisting process, meaning that only 100 are going to interview, between the online review and the interview stage, if you haven't been put forward to an interview, we do encourage you to seek feedback, but we ask that you wait until the end of the selection process in late October so that we're able to dedicate appropriate time to really giving you some robust and helpful feedback. When you do commence the application process, this will be available on our applications page of the website where there'll be a link to apply here, which will take you to an online portal where you can make your own, you can log in and make your own um, application page, which you can log out of and then return to at your leisure to keep working on over the course of the period the application is open for. As a part of the application, you'll need to complete the following sections. There'll be general information, which includes some of the details listed on screen, your name, contact details, proof of citizenship, bio, etc. Academic summary, work experience summary, professional statements, leadership engagement and impact, personal statements, and the referee request section. This will appear as a dashboard with several different tabs that you can click on and go in and complete these short answer and upload sections. Some things to keep in mind when writing your application, some are obvious, such as please read the instructions and the criteria, and obviously don't miss the deadline. You should seek guidance wherever you can. Most universities will have support available in writing applications and you should take advantage of this if you're able to. You do need to be able to sell yourself and your vision for the benefit of Australia, so make sure you deliver it with confidence and you'll put yourself in good stead. 
it's also important to be honest and genuine as it really does come across well in the written application and it's even more important at the interview stage. Regarding the letters of reference, you must have three of these submitted with your application online. They can be academic, professional or personal, but you should ultimately select people that know you well and can clearly speak about your capacity for leadership in your field, your field of study and your ability to manage the postgraduate studies. In commenting on your ability to manage the pressures of postgraduate studies, an academic professional personal referee can comment on this in some way. And obviously, as we're open to people of all ages, we do expect that uh, the combination of professional, personal and academic references will vary from applicant to applicant. And this is certainly taken into account when the application is assessed. You will need to request your referees through the application platform, which has a request tab, as mentioned earlier. Once you go into this tab, you enter the details of your referees and then you hit a request button. You should certainly inform your referees ahead of time that you're going to be requesting them complete a reference on your behalf for the scholarship. And you should also let them know that the email is going to come to them requesting that they complete this from admin at communityforce.com. There'll be an email that comes to them that gives them a little bit of context about the scholarship and a link to go on and complete a reference on your behalf. Once they have gone on and completed this, it will upload automatically to your application. You'll be able to see whether or not it has been completed on your portal, but you won't be able to see what has been submitted. Some additional things to keep in mind in preparing your application. As mentioned, there are certainly resources available through universities, but you could also take some time to seek out additional resources that might be available to help prepare your application. You should also keep in mind, is your application clearly explaining the broader issue you wish to address with your study and career and how it is going to be of benefit to Australia? Additionally, have you explained why the proposed degree and overseas institution is the best place in the world for your area of study and vital to achieving your proposed benefit? Some more commonly asked questions regarding our application. If you have any issues whatsoever with the referees, I've given a bit of context as to how they will be requested, but what will they actually be asked? They will be asked to submit a one to two page letter of recommendation, and they will also have to complete a short scaled metric where they will select a numbered response to your suitability against the core John Monash Scholarship selection criteria. It shouldn't take very long to complete and it's quite straightforward. But if your referees are having any issues whatsoever, my details will be listed in the email they receive from admin at Community Force and they're encouraged to reach out to me and I can help uh, with any issues they might have. If you find that the request is not working and your referee has mentioned that they have not received it, we encourage you to first try and resubmit it via the platform. You can continue doing this as many times as you like up until it has actually been submitted. Um, and if in the case that they still haven't received it, you should certainly encourage them to reach out to me. As mentioned, the details for the scholarship coordinator at the General Sir John Monash Foundation will be listed in the email that they receive. Also, it will be on the platform when you're logged in, you will be able to see the details at the bottom of your screen and also on the website. Is there a template for the proposed budget to be submitted with the application? There is no template required. The budget, as mentioned, is an opportunity to reflect the level of consideration you've put into the realities of your overseas study. So consider what are the fees for your degree, how much will the expected living expenses be over the course of the time overseas, and how do you plan on covering all of these costs? Approximates at the time of your application are more than suitable. And you can upload this in any format that you like. A commonly asked question is that 
if you will be overseas during the time of the first round panels, how do I indicate this on my application? When you're submitting the general information section, which also requires your address and state of residence, the way that applicants that have progressed to the first round interviews are allocated to their appropriate panel is by where they have listed they're currently living in Australia. So we encourage you to please put in your overseas address and then in listing which state you are living in, select overseas other. Where are the first round interviews held? Um, they're most commonly held at universities or else foundation supporter representatives might host us around the country. When will you hear if successful in being progressed to the first round interviews? You will approximately hear about this by mid-August. The first panel this year will be held on the 19th of August and those that will be on that panel will have the least amount of notice. However, we anticipate that all applicants will hear whether or not they've been progressed by around the 12th to the 14th of August. Another commonly asked question is if you are eligible for the scholarship if you're completing a postgraduate degree from an Australian university but on exchange overseas. Unfortunately, to be eligible, the postgraduate degree must be awarded to you by an overseas institution. If it's being duly awarded by an Australian university and an overseas institution, this does fit the criteria, but I encourage you to reach out just to run over this um, with the office team directly, just to make sure before you complete the application. Is the postgrad if the postgraduate degree I'm proposing is quite different to my undergraduate field of study, is there a problem with this? This doesn't preclude you from applying, but you should make sure that you're very clear in indicating why you've chosen this pathway, but also that you will be able to take on this change of, of field of study at the postgraduate level. Often people will get in touch with us to mention that they haven't actually been accepted into the postgraduate degree at the time of applying and is this a problem? As mentioned, it's more common that applicants at the time of applying for our scholarship will not have even applied for their proposed postgraduate study due to the timing being so far in advance and that's not a problem at all. It is also fine if you have applied and been accepted and have an unconditional offer for the following year. If you're having any issues with uploads on the platform, you can always double check to see if these have uploaded successfully by viewing your application um, in the way that an online reviewer would. On your application platform, you're able to, to, you're able to click a preview button, which is available in the top right-hand side of the dashboard. Do I have to put in a second option for a proposed postgraduate degree in institution? It's certainly strongly encouraged that you do put in a second option. It is a good opportunity to really highlight the level of consideration you've put into um, the research of appropriate overseas institutions for your field of study. Can I put down two separate masters and apply for funding for both as long as it is under the three years of funding? This is a bit of a tricky one. Um, in some cases, uh, essentially if it's a one plus one style Oxford dual masters, then this is fine. However, if it's two separate degrees that are not linked by any one application, essentially if they require an application to be completed again at the end of the first year for another separate degree, then this is not eligible for the funding. More than happy to discuss this one a bit further if you have any queries and wondering if your degree pathway fits into the um, suitable dual masters or if it doesn't. Um, again, there'll be details listed at the end of this presentation and encourage you to reach out to um, clarify. If you're worried about the application section seeming to have overlap or your answer seeming repetitive, it's important to keep in mind that whilst you view the application as a dashboard with a series of tabs, the online assessors 
will review it as one long document that sort of reads more like an essay. So that preview button that I mentioned earlier, it's important to probably have a look at that once you've completed your application in its entirety so that you're able to really make sure that the application overall has a good flow and isn't repetitive. And finally, will any preference be given for particular institutions of study? There's certainly no preference for any particular institutions. What is, as mentioned, what is the most important thing is that we're having applicants that are really indicating that they've done appropriate research into where the best place in the world is for their proposed area of study. So there is absolutely no preference given to the uh, institution of study outside of it being the best place in the world for your, for your, um, for your proposed postgraduate degree and to gain the skills needed for your proposed impact. So for any further information on the scholarship, other John Monash scholars, plus the application and selection process dates, please visit our website, I listed below, and go to the applications page. And also keep an eye out for application live webinar dates, where you'll be able to join a similar um, presentation to this but with the opportunity to interact with myself and ask further questions and also if you have any other questions that you'd really like to discuss at the moment please feel free to email the foundation team at info at johnmonash.com and then we'll be able to um, you know, get you in touch with someone and help answer any queries you might have and any questions or concerns with any of the information mentioned today also reach out to that email address and we'll get in touch with you as soon as we can.